Let's bring into the conversation member of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, Jared Bernstein. Jared, it's good to see you this morning. Let's go back to the gas prices there. As of this morning, 4.72 a gallon, up 12 cents from just last week, with no slowdown really in sight here. We saw the president's op-ed. We know what he believes the sources are, which is the Fed, which is our deficits, which is the war in Russia. All of those may be true, but that's not helping anybody today, tomorrow, or next week paying for gas at the pump. What do you say to people who are really struggling with prices, not just with gas, but groceries and so many other items? Well, let me start by underscoring some of the points the president made in his op-ed earlier this week, which is uh, targeting precisely uh, what and who you asked about there. I mean, this is a president who grew up in a family where high gas and grocery prices were kitchen yeah. table issues. So, of course, we're doing all we can to help on the price front, and uh, pr uh, particularly at gas at the pump, but in, in other commodities as well. Now, of course, as you said, uh, Vladimir uh, Putin's unjust uh, invasion of the sovereign nation of Ukraine is all over uh, that issue. Issue. And we're hearing today some reports that OPEC may step up and compensate for some of the lost Russian barrels. We can't wait uh, on the sidelines. Uh, that's why the president has overseen the largest release of uh, oil from uh, global reserves uh, ever presided over. That's why he's tried to increase the supply of uh, E15 ethanol gasoline, uh, mostly benefiting uh, buyers in the Midwest. And we're going to continue to press on making sure suppliers meet their quotas and uh, doing all we can to increase refinery capacity as well. These are all parts of a complicated global market, uh, but we're doing all we can to help. So uh, we've had many economists on this show over the last couple of weeks, and in fact months, pointing to some of the pandemic era stimulus packages as overheating the economy. We understand why they were necessary at the time to save a lot of businesses, to save a lot of people's livelihoods. As you look back as an economist, just simply though, do you believe that those packages are contributing to the inflation we're seeing today? I believe that those packages are integrally co uh, contributing uh, to uh, some of the remarkable economic uh, statistics and dynamics that we've posted. So uh, the Federal Reserve recently reported, and one of your commentators was talking about this, uh, families uh, are reporting that they feel more financially secure, even with elevated inflation, than at any point in the history of this survey going back to 2013. Yeah. Manufacturing job growth up at a 30-year high. Uh, we have business investment up 20 percent. We know that entrepreneurial applications for small business are the highest on record, and of course, over over 8 million jobs created since this president got here. All of those have the fingerprints of the American Rescue Plan on them, as well as, of course, uh, getting uh, vaccinations out there in a way that was not occurring before we got here. So no question that these have contributed to this economic backdrop that is so critical right now with people facing this elevated inflation. Understood. Did it contribute to the inflation, though? The inflation that we're observing right now is very much a function of high levels of demand and constrained supply. Now, that relates to COVID. Uh, that relates to some things that certainly weren't in the picture when the American Rescue Plan went into place, things like Omicron and other variants, things like uh, Russia's uh, invasion, things like China's lockdown. And, and, and sure, fiscal policy is always going to contribute to the demand side of the equation. But I am not here to uh, at, at all look at this in any sort of one-sided way. When you're talking about the rescue plan, uh, it's essential to balance some of the heat that fiscal policy helped to create along with uh, the, that, that list of benefits. You know, we just got an unemployment insurance report this morning with his historically low levels of claims. This is the most remarkably tight labor market I've seen in decades of tracking these things. And, and, and if you know anything about Bidenomics, you know that worker bargaining power in a tight job market is at the core of making sure people get a fair shake yeah. in this economy. Hey, Jared, good morning. Circling back to gas prices, which I know is a particular uh, concern in the building behind you. Um, you said that the president will be do, willing to do whatever it takes to help drive down those prices. One of those things includes heading apparently to Saudi Arabia to meet with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, a toxic figure on the world stage since the death of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. What will the president's message be to the Crown Prince in terms of what he needs to do to produce more oil? 
So one of the reasons I get to come out and, here and talk to you is because uh, I don't lean over my skis in areas that I, I'm not re, uh, read out on. And I, I, I just don't have a readout on that. That would be a great question for some folks who are more intimately involved with that side of the equation. What I can tell you is that uh, ever since uh, the campaign, the president has talked about the importance of uh, oil producers, oil producers uh, meeting their quotas. Uh, and, and in this case, we're looking at the reports just the same as everybody else in the markets today, looking at the reports on OPEC perhaps stepping up production. There's a meeting that's occurring today in order to tr uh, try to replace some of the lost barrels of Russian oil. And there again, I think a key point is that, remember, uh, uh, Putin's uh, uh, unprovoked invasion is, of course, a key factor uh, in the prices at the pump. Then shifting gears then to supply chain issues, which are a driving force for other aspects of inflation right now. Give us an yeah. update, if you will, as what the situation we're seeing uh, at the nation's ports. Uh, what more can be done there? There's still obviously delays for a lot of goods uh, yeah. reaching stores across the country. Well, for, uh, first of all, thank you for that question, because we're so focused at the pump. It's a price we see, you know, twice a block when we're driving uh, to or home from work. Uh, but in fact, uh, you know, that's about 20 percent of, uh, of family expenditures at the most. So there's there's lots of other factors that families are facing. And, and the president has consistently talked about this. I think here, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat of a a, a, a sage older person around this White House. And, and so I can tell you that I've never been part of an administration in my long history in government that has done more to help on the supply side of the economy. And the area where I think that is most pronounced is in supply chains. Now, here we're going to start talking about things like dwell time, the amount of time uh, 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 containers spend in ports. That's down significantly. We're going to talk about how shelves are stocked. Obviously, I'm abstracting. Uh, 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 baby formula is a different discussion right now. But shelves otherwise are stocked 90, 91 percent, about what they were before the pandemic. Uh, so our efforts at the ports are probably one of the key things we've done to help get goods from ship to shelf. And one of the reasons why uh, the supply chains are somewhat less binding right now and why businesses are actually quite heftily building up their inventories. Jared, what are the prospects of President Biden lifting the tariffs, the Chinese tariffs that President Trump imposed in his failed trade war? I think the president has consistently said, particularly in recent weeks, that this is yet another uh, idea that's on the table. When the president says fighting inflation is my top domestic priority, uh, everything that uh, should be is on the table, and, and, and that, that that is as well. However, uh, I'm not going to talk about that until we're ready to, to say something, and the president will certainly take the lead on that. But it is, it is very much uh, a topic of conversation. Member of the White House Council of Economic Advisors, Jared Bernstein. Jared, thanks for your time this morning.